Conversation. As far as I can remember, probably from the age of six or seven, I was aware that Ramadan is marked by the appearance of the new crescent moon. To be aware of the phases of the moon and its journey around the earth is something quite critical to Islamic practice. For those who want to go higher and further and explore and pull things apart and see what they're made of, it's ideal. The moon is by far the best thing to look at in the night sky because there are details you can pick out just with your naked eye. Some of our first understandings about what things were like in space come from studies of the moon. New moon is when the moon is actually very close to the sun and it's reflecting all the light of the sun back into outer space away from the earth. So we don't actually see the moon at all. As it moves just slightly further around, the moon eventually suddenly appears. I mean, it, it was there all along, but it was lost in the glare of the sun. And once the glare of the sun has died down enough, suddenly it shimmers into view, which, which is a lovely sight. In the traditional Muslim countries, you still get thousands of people who will go to the hilltops for the new moon, especially uh, at the beginning and end of Ramadan. The night sky did inspire people to imagine where we were, and this is a very basic human question. Where are we? How do we get here? Um, where do we come from? These things are things that are addressed by looking up into the night sky. There is a sense of vastness. Science is possibly the most powerful tool methodology that humanity has come up with yet. That's taken us on a very long journey. I mean, it's brought us to huge amounts of amazingly powerful knowing. When we see the moon, it is a symbol of light in darkness. The moon is often compared in Islamic uh, literature to teachers of divine knowledge, to teachers of the spiritual mysteries who have, in a sense, reflected that light. Uh, from the son of, of the Prophet Muhammad and of Jesus Christ and Moses and Abraham, etc., before them. Very early on, uh, it, was, it was understood that the moon could be a sphere which was lit up on one side. And through a variety of measurements, uh, distance to the moon, the size of the moon, the relative size between the moon and the earth were worked out. I'm still amazed by the amount of information we can glean just by looking at light coming from distant objects and knowing how physics and chemistry works here on Earth. It's important to study the night sky and the moon for me both as a believer and as a scientist. For a believer it's God's gift of reason and the human intellect which has allowed us to make such astonishing discoveries. We are on a tiny planet going around a sun which is one of hundreds of billions of stars in our galaxy. Our galaxy itself is one of hundreds of billions of galaxies in a vast, vast universe. But just by looking at light, we can learn so much uh, about, about how nature on a really huge scale works. The first quarter moon is when you see one half of the face of the moon facing the Earth, lit up by the sun. The modern scientific paradigm was hugely influenced by Isaac Newton. There was a perspective of God as a watchmaker, a kind of a creator who set up the world and then um, set it off and if you could find out the laws by which God had set up the world then you would be able to, um, well, understand God, trying to find the edge of the universe, trying to find the ultimate God particle or something but I'd rather just be here with the divine that is this life. I have very dear friends who are people of very profound faith um, and who are also extraordinary scientists. Uh, and they see in this incredible uh, intricacy of the universe a, a really beautiful testament to a creator, which is not something I see, but it's, it's something that they feel very deeply and which drives them on to learn more.
And eventually, of course, we come to full moon, which is where the, the moon is directly on the opposite side of the Earth from the sun. Science and reason cannot prove or disprove the existence of God. It is a matter of faith. Faith can provide a sense of, of values, of why we are here in the world, what is our duty, if any, how we should be behaving, uh, you know, in our individual practice, relationships with each other, and a sense of the sacred. That's where religion can play that part, is to encourage scientists to enjoy uh, unlocking these wonderful discoveries, the secrets of the way nature works. I think of religion and science as, as fundamentally addressing separate questions. So I don't, I don't see a crossover in that way. When I talk about science, I'm talking about a, a method of thinking um, rigorously in an evidence-based way. So looking for repeatable phenomena that help us to understand the physics of the world around us and really how the natural world works. The last quarter is uh, the face of the moon where the other half of the moon uh, facing the earth is lit up by the sun. Many religious people are very anti-scientific, very uh, anti-rational, almost irrational. On the other hand, there are many, many people, of course, who've left, uh, who've lost their faith or abandoned their religion or faith, they don't believe in it at all because of science. Depending on which camp you're in, if you're entrenched in either camp, you tend to dismiss uh, all the wisdom and knowledge of the other camp. I do believe that, that science and faith answer different questions for human beings. You wouldn't want to design an airplane based on on concepts of faith, but you wouldn't want necessarily to decide an ethical code based on concepts of science. I mean, science can, can tell you how to make an atom bomb, it can't tell you whether to drop it. It's a case of ignorance breeds fear. So many scientists are actually very poor theologians. Equally, on the other side, there are many, many religious scholars and authorities, uh, priests and rabbis and imams and others, who know very little science and therefore they do feel threatened by it when scientists uh, come with all kinds of answers. To me, that conflict between religions and science, it's kind of a clash of the patriarchies. It's like one load of big men <laughs> trying to psych out another load of big men saying, no, no, listen to our, we know all about the world and you don't. And actually, they've both got some things right and they've both got some things missing. I think if we can focus more on the, the shared humanity of both science and faith as opposed to having an either-or approach um, that really emphasizes the conflict rather than the, the unity. Both science and faith are, are two great areas of, uh, of knowledge and learning and wisdom and which enrich each other if understood in the right way and can help uh, uplift the human spirit. Thank you.